What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we are going to be talking about the top 10 budget cards you guys need to buy in NBA 2K19, my team. Sure, like in a lot of videos, I have been talking about these cards, and the reason why I'm making this video is more so than anything, because I kind of want to rank these guys and where, on which ones I think are the very best of the budget cards, because... I know I do a lot of budget squads, and suddenly you see 13 budget squads, so you guys probably have a general idea of who these top 10 are. But for example, if you guys have a 250k squad, but you need one more player and you only have five, 6k for that player. In this video, I'm gonna be ranking them based on just how good they are in general, and the ones that I think will fit into God Squad seamlessly, if you do really wanna save money on the odd one or two player, and you don't wanna go with full budget squads, but you wanna use one or two cheap players, save a little bit empty here or there. That's what this video is for. So if you guys know about all these players, um, you guys probably do all know about them. This video is just going to be ra basically ranking them and my opinion on it. But anyway, before we get on to it, if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We are trying to get 100,000 subscribers in the next couple of weeks, and it's looking like we're gonna do it right now. It's looking like we're about to hit 94,000 subscribers, which is absolutely crazy. So a big, big thanks to everyone for the support recently. And the last three or four weeks have been absolutely nuts in the channel. Like I never expected to grow by this much and just big thanks to everyone that's been watching. But anyway, now we are going to go on to the top 10. So obviously these three here are honorable mentions. We got Micah Red. Micah Red's Pink Diamond is seen as one of the cheesiest cards in the game because of his release and his animations. Micah Red's Amethyst, same release, same animations, although it doesn't have the same badges. Still a great three point shooter and it's still a really great card. Roy Hibbert is a seven foot two big man. He's super nice release. Can shoot the mid, can shoot the three. He's also got an unbelievable block of 98. He's not the slowest, but I don't know, there's just something about Roy Hibbert that I don't like. I don't know what it is. Like, he should definitely be better than one of the centers on this list, but I just don't know why I prefer that center to Hibbert. And then you've got Eiji and Leon. Can play at the four, can play at the five. When he first came out, he was a steal, one of the best budget cards in the game. 10 gold badges, he's got a great uh, mid-range, great three ball. He's a great dunker, and he's just overall just an incredible card in this game. Great shot block as well. Can defend well, got good lateral quickness, and still a really great card for the price that he's going for. Like, he's about 2.5k right now, as far as I know. But anyway, now we're on to the top 10. At number 10 is a guy that the more I use him, the more I like him. It is Ruby Zaire Smith. He's like, in my opinion, a almost the exact same, feels the exact same as the Gary Payton card. Except I prefer Zaire Smith because he's a better dunker. The Gary Payton 97 overall. They feel so, so similar. But Zaire Smith is 6'4". Obviously, it's not particularly tough for two guard. I do run him at the one when I do play with him. He's got two all-fame badges, post riser and a City finisher. He's got eight goal badges, including nearly all the defensive ones. He's got an 80 shot mid, which isn't great, but his release is good. 84 shot three, so if he's open for three, he will hit the vast majority of them. He's got a good enough driving layup, but he's got a 99 driving dunk and contact dunk. He's also got a 100 driving flashy dunk and 100 standing dunk tendency. So he gets a lot of kind of weird standing dunks because he's so small. He also has got really, really good defensive stats. And by really good, I mean like some of the best defensive stats in the game. He's got 96 on ball, say 95 on ball defense, like you 96 lateral quickness, as well as a steal rating of 95 and a shotgun is 95. It's unreal for this card. At number nine, we are going to be running, or we are going to be putting Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones Diamond's a beast, Eddie Jones Ruby's a beast, and Eddie Jones' Amethyst is just incredible value. The only one that you can buy in the auction house, Eddie Jones Amethyst 99 defense overall, two Hall of Fame badges, including Catch and Shoot Pickpocket, as well as 12 gold badges. Limitless Range is a big one on him as well. Really nice release, great animations, great defensive card, really nice dunker, can speed boost, he can do absolutely everything in game, and is just a perfect card. He's got 88 speed, speed ball, and acceleration, and lockdown. Like, you can't come up with a better card for the price than Eddie Jones to be. Actually, no, you can, because there's nine more cards in this list, but it's hard. It is hard to make a better card for the price than this. But yeah, so at number eight, we have got a guy that I would have never thought that this guy would ever go to number eight on budget squad list after um, he came out. And it's Thurl Bailey. That just shows how good these new cards are. Thurl Bailey, six foot 11. He's got... He's actually, he's only averaging one point per game for me. I thought I used him a lot more on PC. He's killing it on my console accounts anyway. Five gold badges. He's also got just such good, well-rounded stats. He is money. 
unbelievable release, a really nice dunker, 90 driving and standing dunk. He's also got 82 block, 82 steal. He's got good rebounding stats, got good speed and acceleration, not the best for your ball, got great lateral quickness for a 6'11 player of 88, as well as decent defensive stats. Thurl Bailey is just a god in this game. At number seven, we've got another guy who I always thought was going to be number one in the cheap cards list, but I'm fully convinced they nerfed this guy. It's Mo Bamba. Mo Bamba did not miss for like the first two weeks he was out, and now I'm struggling to hit jumpers with him. And even with the, his inability to shoot jump shots, for me anyway, he's still got six goal badges. He's still like a slender man in game. The best shot blocker in the game, in my opinion, period, including Minute Ball. He's got an 87 shot mid, 87 shot three. He still hit them occasionally, just not at the rate he was hitting them back in the day like it was crazy he's got 75 driving dunk he's got a 95 standing dunk he's got 96 block 96 shot contest he's also got great rebounding stats he's really fast and is quite a good defender not the best lateral quickness but he's not too bad i guess 71 70 strength isn't great but he's so long and blocks so many shots that it kind of makes up for it although it is a bit of a downside so that's why he is only at number seven on this list at number six, we've got one of the best 3 and D guys in the game, period. We have got Bruce Bone. Bruce Bone's release is really nice, in my opinion. He's also got three Hall of Fame badges, pickpocket, pick dodger, and defensive stopper, as well as eight go badges. With my fast rate, break, chase down artist, corner specialist, catch and shoot, charge card, deep range Jedi, lob city passer, and pick and roll maestro. Bruce Bone has got an 88 open shot mid, 94 open shot three, as well as a really nice release, but it's a kind of weird one. It's a really easy release to time, but a really hard release to green. Does anyone else feel that with Bruce Bowen's release? Or is it just me? Like, I really struggle to agree with, Bru with Bruce Bowen. I don't know why. Like, surely it's not just me with that. Like, I really, like, can't green at all with him. But regardless, he hits the majority of shots I take with him, so I'm not going to uh, complain too much. But he's got great defense stats as well, and that's mainly what he's there for. He can speed boost, which helps. Six foot eight, got a really, really good shot, and has really good steel. He's got really good speed, speed ball, and acceleration. And he's also got 90 lateral quickness, which is really, really good. So he's one of the best defenders in the game, and for his price, is just an absolute steal. Now we are on to the top five. Now, this is where it gets interesting. At number five, we have got a power forward, and it's a diamond. And this guy is 7-ish KMT, and it's Lowry Markkinen. Markkinen, 98 offense, 95 defense overall, seven foot tall. He's got six Hall of Fame badges, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for people playing against them doesn't have all fame limitless does have like every other shooting badge hall of fame he's got a 96 open shot three great post game great post looking fade away 95 see, 95 oh no 96 96 96 open shot mid 96 open shot three it's kind of confused it was 95 96 just kind of everywhere but he's got a decent dunk he's also got a really good block of 88 which is crazy for marketing unreal rebounder moderately fast not the not the best lateral quickness not the worst either and isn't the worst defender in the world. Unbelievable offensive card, decent enough defender, and can shoot the absolute lights out. Definitely, definitely deserves a spot in this top 10 list, and I have him at number five. At number four, we have got the guy who I referred to earlier as the Demi Demi God. Not quite a Demi God, but very, very close to it. It is the Amethyst Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox is one of the nicer release in the game. 6'9", so he's really tall. He's got four Hall of Fame badges, posterizer, catch and shoot, relentless finisher, and one more fast break, as well as 11 gold badges. Kevin Knox has got a good driving layup. He has got a really good open shot mid. Got a good open shot three of 92. If he's open, he's not missing. He's got a really good driving dunk, or a good driving dunk, sorry, of 85. He can speed boost. He's got not the best defense stats, although he didn't seem to be shot over too much with low shot contest, and his steal feels way better than 80. I used to get steals at a Sapphire, who had a steal rating of like 50. This 80 rate steal gets a ton. He's got decent rebounding stats, got good speed, speed ball and acceleration, good enough lateral quickness, and is a competent defender. A really good card, 6'9", good shooter, and must pick up. And number three, we have got... I'm going to go with a center, and it's a ruby. And you guys obviously know who it is, and you're probably shocked he's not higher, and it's just because there are two more that I just think are slightly better. Thon Maker. Thon Maker, 88 offense, 83 defensive overall. One Hall of Fame badge, one more fast break. And the big thing is, is that a lot of people initially thought that Thon was only really effective because he could speed boost and he needed a shoe for that. However, one thing I noticed is he's got the Yanis crossover, so you don't even need the shoe. And while his stamina is a big, big problem, which is only 80, he does tend to get tired a lot. Defensively, he's not great, but not the worst with a decent block rating and a wide body. So he gets a lot of bump steals, although he does get bullied inside. 
He's got the Giannis crossover, some crazy contact layup animations. He gets so many. Like, I've never finished through contact as well with anyone in this game as much as Thon Maker. His driving dunk rating of 75 is a lie. He will jam it on people. And he is legitimately a demigod. Unbelievable card. The fact he's number three is crazy. Number two is one of the best power forwards in the game. It's an amethyst. And again, you guys probably know this is Marvin Bagley. Marvin Bagley is not as fun to use. Can't dominate like Thon Maker, but he's just an overall just well-rounded player. If you guys want the power forward in your team, you can't get much better than Bagley, and you're also going to save probably 100, 200k <laughs> rather than upgrading. To get a significantly better power forward than Bagley, you've realistically got to get Carl Malone or Blake Griffin or one of the token rewards. They are the only significantly better cards than Bagley at the power forward position. But he's got four um, Hall of Fame badges. Actually, Kurlenko as well, but he's kind of a small forward more than anything. Great shot mid, great post game, great shot three, 90, really nice release, unbelievable dunker. He's also got really good block and shot contest, great rebounder, got really good speed, speed ball and acceleration for 4A power forward, good enough lateral quickness, and is a really good defender. Just a beast in game. And number one, I called Knox a demi demigod. This guy is legitimately a demigod. I Jonathan Isaac. He's one of the few players in the game, I believe, can contain the likes of Simmons and Yanis. Four Hall of Fame defensive badges, 610, glitchy animations. He's got an 85 shot mid, 85 shot three, which is decent. And the big thing is that he's an unbelievable dunker. He can speed boost, got glitchy crossover. He's an unbelievable defender, 92 block, 95 shot, and 92 steal. He's long, he's decently fast, got unbelievable out quickness and defensive stats. And this guy is just incredible in game. So anyway, that's the video. In my opinion, these are the top 10 cards that you guys can pick up for, well, not even pick up for less than price, just budget cards that you guys can pick up. And yeah, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.